Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Part-Time Allies Part-Time Podcast. Today, I'm going to be your host, Josh, and joining me on the couch, as always, we have Ryan. I'm half alive right now. <laughs> <laughs> you look half alive right now. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> no, you, you look all right. You look Thank all right. You. Thank you. And uh, Jordan and AJ are not joining us today. However, you may have heard the voice of our good friend, David. Hey, what's up? I'm back. Back on the show for the second time. Back by popular demand. That's Apparently. Right. Everyone was asking for it, and we finally gave it to them. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that happened all, at all. <laughs> all one of you, and it's Phil. <laughs> <laughs> it's Phil. Uh, so, um, David was just saying that he hadn't seen Fight Club, and I was gonna, I was gonna pose a question here, like, okay, guys, let, well, I got a topic for us. What's your favorite Edward Norton Brad Pitt movie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Ryan, oh, I oh, have one. Josh, what is it? Uh, mine's Fight Club. <laughs> Ryan, terrific. Ryan, do you have one? Um, it's uh. Midnight, no, uh, Murder on the Orient Express. None of the, neither of them are in that. I really want to see that. <laughs> Is that though. movie even out yet? No, Perfect. it's out. It's out. The, it's out this <laughs> your, fall. Your favorite Ed Norton Brad Pitt movie does not exist <laughs> and does not have Brad Pitt or Ed Norton in it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good. Okay. No, actually, have you seen the trailers for that? That I looks. So, it looks amazing. It, it looks does. so good. It looks really Which, cool. I didn't. Okay, I found out just yesterday. I was in a, I was in a Kohl's books or Indigo bookstore, and. Every so often, I like to look at the mystery where the Agatha, Agatha Christie novels are, because oh, yeah. she wrote one of my favorite books of all time, and then there were none, which was amazing. And I've been wanting to read more, and it turns out one of her books is Murder on the Orient Express. Oh, interesting. And I, I didn't end up picking up it up yesterday. I got a different book, but uh, I wanted to get it. Because I was like, maybe I should read this before the movie. Yeah. Speaking of which, I saw that you had uh, Ready Player One in the back of your car. Yeah, I've read it before. I borrowed it from a friend, but I had to go out and get it so I can read it again nice. before the movie. I've, I've heard it's really good. It's so good. Yeah. That that was one of my favorite reads too. Yeah, that's uh, our other part-time friend Nick. That's his favorite book of all time. Oh, okay, gotcha. Oh, cool. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you after the show if I could borrow when you're done because I'd like to read it too. Oh, you could borrow it right now because I'm going to save it until we're closer to the movie date. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, I have a lot of time to kill right now, so I'm. I've got a few books on the go right now. I, uh, I've still been reading through the Game of Thrones series. I'm still mm. on the first one. I'm gonna try and truck through that now. Ooh! And yesterday, I just picked up something really interesting. What's that? I found out that they just remade. Well, so in Star Wars, uh, canonness. I don't know what. <laughs> I think you just call it canon. In Star yeah. Wars canon. Lots of the books were scrapped once Force Awakens came out. And by lots, I mean all of them. Right, yeah. Yep. But since Force Awakens came out, there's been new novels and everything coming out so that there is some extra canon going on. Mm-hmm. And what just got made canon again was uh, General Thrawn, who I hadn't, I've never read. He had a, uh, there was like a trilogy of like pretty amazing novels apparently with General Thrawn. All right. Thrawn. I can't say that right now. I'm half alive, guys. Give me a break. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, apparently they're just amazing. And he was one of the coolest characters. And lots of people are disappointed that he wasn't going to be in the new Star Wars movies. Because he was kind of what made the novelizations, like, thrive, apparently. But they just came out with the Between Episodes 3 and 4 book about Thrawn's kind of backstory. So Cool. I'm really excited to read that. Was Thrawn a protagonist or antagonist? No, he was like, uh, it's hard to exp- explain. Like my, because I haven't actually read his trilogy, but from okay. from my understanding, he was kind of um, uh, oh, I just had it. Uh, gr- he was kind of like Grand Mo- Moff Tarkin. Like he was just kind of oh, a, okay. he was just kind of a normal dude in charge, mm-hmm. but he just didn't like give a crap about anything and just kind of did his thing and apparently you're just one of the scariest villains oh cool interesting hmm. so i'm pretty excited if if anyone out there has read it or is just in love with the Thrawn character just send us out more info about him because i was probably wrong about a lot of things i just said there yeah and if you ever want to write in part-time allies about anything you can reach us at part-time allies mail at gmail.com we're also on twitter we are on twitter we have no followers <laughs> It's sad. <laughs> Please come follow us. <laughs> you don't have to, but you should. 
uh, it's weird to me. Like, I don't use Twitter. No, the Twitter has become. I've noticed Twitter has become a lot about because so Twitter when it initially came out, you can you can go back on anybody's Twitter and look at their posts from like you know the early two thousand tens ish, and you can see like oh Twitter was used to complain mm-hmm. and it was used to like just you know they like little conversations here and there right. But what it seems like Twitter is now is like the crafting of memes. Like a yeah. good tweet is a good meme. Yeah. yeah. And it, I I don't really have enough experience to like converse in that space. So I also just like I watch from afar. Yeah. It also very much seems it's just a way to hear what's going on in celebrities' lives. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that too. That like that it, it seems like that's the only use for it. David, when you were doing your uh, your YouTube channel, did you do any social media stuff? I, I did Twitter. Uh, like, I didn't really post a whole lot because I didn't really know what to post. Like, yeah. It's kind of like a weird area of, of Twitter. Like, you don't, you obviously want to do the self-promotion and whatnot, but it's like, what else do you post about? It's like a, it's like a crappier for, form of Facebook status, <laughs> is basically, is what I look at it as. Yeah. The, um, you get less words to do. Yeah, it. exactly. When I started getting into Magic a little bit more, like uh, Magic the Gathering, I followed a lot of the bigger names in there, and uh, a lot of those people are actually really cool about having, you know, they'll they'll post their draft, mm-hmm. for example, like right. a picture of their draft, and they'll be like, what do you guys think we should take? And, like, I'll, you know, throw my two cents in, and a lot of time I get replies back, and it's like, okay. oh, this is, like, the first time I've actually used Twitter for, like, a conversational thing. Right. So, I don't know. it's It's been kind of neat that way, because before, for years, I just watched. Yeah. But, uh... I think for me, like, the cool thing about Twitter was, like, you could follow, like, I watch a lot of sports. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sport. I'm a sports nerd, if that's a thing, I guess. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, so I watch, like, tons of sports, baseball, hockey, football, all sorts of stuff like that. And I use Twitter to, like, follow, like, sports reporters and players and whatnot. But I found that r- a lot of the stuff on Twitter gets posted to Reddit. <laughs> and so um, I was thinking, it's like, okay, why do I go to Twitter to see all this stuff when I can just see it all on Reddit? Yeah, like, if, if you're yeah. hounding both platforms, you'll get it, you know, that five or ten minutes sooner on Twitter than you will on Reddit, yeah. right? Because Reddit's reporting the quote-unquote news of twitter right Right. so like if you want to be dead in the moment of the of the conversation twitter is the place to go but yeah i'm not i'm not a dead in the moment person like i just (laughs) i'll just just give me my news and i'll get it when i see it like that's basically i just peruse when i go sit on the toilet (laughs) right on speaking of which we were talking about this last night actually you still don't read it ryan i still don't read it no I, i don't know how i've i've gone on to reddit multiple times and i have no idea what i'm looking at so you know what? Impromptu segment. Let's talk about Reddit. Let's so, talk about Reddit. Reddit. Here's here's the quick rundown of what Reddit is for those who don't know. So Reddit is pretty much the form to end all forms. Yeah. It's a it's a collection of of forms. And so what happens is when you make a post in Reddit, generally posts are either posts of texts or po- sorry posts of text or post of a link, and the posts can get what are called upvoted or downvoted. Mm-hmm. So you put a post. You click the up arrow to make it go up a spot, and you click the down arrow to make it go down a spot, and that's pretty much how it works. Or not to make it go up or down a spot, but to give it a point <laughs> up or a point down. So Reddit, the way the Reddit URL works is you have www.reddit.com slash r and then slash the name of the subreddit. And a subreddit are the generally the topicized things. So yeah. like, for example, one of the Reddits I go on a lot is r slash Dota 2. And that's where I get all my Dota 2 news, and the Dota 2 stuff will filter up to the top. When you go to Reddit uh, by yourself for the first time, it'll automatically default you to what's called R All, which mm-hmm. is the the culmination of all of the best posts across all subreddits. Yep. It will filter to the top of that. So if you just go to regular old Reddit, what you'll probably see is like the best cat picture of the day, yep. <laughs> some news, maybe a funny GIF, Um you know, maybe a, a trailer it's, for a big movie. Yeah, it's a GIF. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, I, oh, I, I don't I even start. Don't, yeah, please <laughs> don't. <laughs> Let's I, not I, get into I, this. I, I say GIF. I say yeah. GIF. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, so that's Reddit. And then the the cool part about it is, if you make an account on Reddit, you can post, obviously, so mm-hmm. you can be part of the conversation. Uh, but what you can also do is personalize your Reddit. Yeah. So the Reddit also has the Reddit homepage, which if you're not in an account, is just another version of R all. Mm-hmm. But if you are on the homepage and you tell it, okay, the subreddits I like are R Dota Two, R Magic the Gathering, um, R EDH is another subreddit I follow, and like maybe you know R jokes and R movies and whatever. Your homepage will then be the best posts from just your favorited subreddits. So it's like a it's like a news page tailored to you, kind of in a way. Yeah. 
And uh, yeah, it's where I get a lot of my information. If I have like a couple minutes to browse my phone while I'm waiting for something, it's probably on yeah. Reddit. And, and the cool thing about Reddit is it's almost completely anonymous. Almost. Yeah. And like, it, like nothing there, is on, anonymous, obviously. There are stupid people who out themselves. Yeah, but, but like you, like it's not identified like by your name, like on a Twitter. Like you, yeah. like if I had a Twitter, it'd be David at last name or something like that, and uh-huh. that'd be easy to identify me. But on Reddit, I just have my username, and that's yeah. it. Unless I choose to put myself out there. Yeah. One of one of the premier subreddits is called Today, or it's it's T I F U. <laughs> which stands oh. for Today I Effed Up. And uh, it's a subreddit where people post their stories about how they just royally screwed up in the last 24 <laughs> hours. Although usually they alter the rules over the last yeah. couple of days. But um, and yet a lot of times when you're reading those posts, you'll see what are called throwaway accounts. Yes. <laughs> where if someone's, someone's account is a little too tied to them, they'll make another account just to post their embarrassing story. Yep. So uh, sorry, mm-hmm. Ryan, I cut you off there. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I was just going to say that that's actually kind of sounds interesting to me because yeah. I, I feel like I never have like I, I'm always looking for different news things on a diff- bunch of different sites. And I feel like this will be helpful. Yeah. yeah, this like this is the conglomerate. So like every everything like if, if you know, North Korea fires a new test missile, uh, the Avengers uh, Infinity War trailer drops and, you know, something else big happens. Trump says a stupid tweet. <laughs> They're all going to be sourced yeah. from three separate websites, like all against each other in Reddit. And yeah. then you can click on the links and go to uh, to the site and check it out yourself. So Now, dumb question of the day. Is there an app for it? Yes. There certainly is. There's a few apps for it, actually. There's a lot of different ones. Because there's oh, the... Oh, that's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's the Reddit default one, which is the one I use. Um, and it's totally fine. But uh, for, for the people who... Ha- there's like... Because Reddit's actually a fairly compli- has a fairly complicated API and backend. Yeah, it does. Very. Um, and if you want to utilize any of that stuff, there are kind of more complex apps out there to take yeah. care of it if you're just there to browse the news the regular reddit app is totally fine yeah i use reddit is fun mm. which that's like the premier android one right yeah that's that's that one mm-hmm. um what was i gonna say oh going back to like the the software stuff the cool thing about reddit too there's also a browser extension called res i think it is yeah the reddit enhanced something. yeah and so what you can do is you can like filter out specific topics. Like say, you know, you're tired of Trump. You don't care anymore. He's done <laughs> enough stupid stuff in the world. You can just filter that out and you never have to see it again yeah. on Reddit. That That's okay. That, oh no, never mind. I'm not going to get into politics here, especially <laughs> you know, it's, American politics. Yeah, I'm we're, like, we're Canadian. We don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to get into it, but I'm like, ah, oh, there's no, there's too much going on. I'm not yeah. going to bother. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to bore you. I'm changing the uh, the uh, genre of our podcast on spot or on uh, SoundCloud from entertainment to politics. <laughs> yeah, thanks, for, thanks, Ryan. <laughs> Just hours. from the, I, I, you said I, the referenced, I referenced it. And <laughs> now it's getting changed. Two hours of American politics. Oh gosh. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. Let's talk about Justin Trudeau. <laughs> He's cool. I saw him speak cool. once. <laughs> the, wait, did you actually? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's cool. He's a good public speaker. Nice. Um. No, uh, the other thing I was going to bring up, because I just realized since we we haven't sat down and had a podcast in two weeks. Yeah, so in out there in podcast land, for you guys, it seems like I've or there has been a podcast for you to listen to for every week for the last little while. Yep. But what actually happened was we recorded episode eight, the fiasco episode, before episode seven, like yeah. hours before, and then posted episode seven. I went on vacation, um, we posted episode 8, and then I came back. So, yep. I've been kind of out of the news sphere a little bit. Um, so I have as well, because there, there's been a lot going on just with things. Like, there, I think there was a week there where I barely even played any games. I'm like, oh, it's a good thing there's not a podcast, because I don't have a lot to talk <laughs> about games-wise. Yeah. But over the course of two weeks, I, I'm look, looking back, and I'm, oh, th- there's actually a few things that happened. I saw... Did, has anyone seen Atomic Blonde? No, I haven't gotten to go to any movies. Not seen it, no. Because that came out, and I have interesting thoughts about it. Okay. I would say it's a pretty good movie, and it it's definitely entertaining and visually kind of cool. It's just a bit convoluted, and the, the I don't know, the, the, the plot was a bit interesting at closer to the end. But I, I don't know. It was a decent movie, and like worth the price of admission. So Cool. I think, I think on Reddit, or Reddit. We were talking about Reddit. on Rotten Tomatoes. It has like a, I think a seventy-five. I'm like that. That's not bad. Yeah. And I'm like that. Might be a little high for me. I might give it a seventy. But uh, yeah, it, pretty decent movie. 
But uh, I feel like we should save this for when Jordan's back on. But at that same weekend, the Emoji Movie came out. Oh, oh yeah. no. And we've all seen... Have we all seen the Rotten Tomato score for the Emoji Movie? Yes. Sure have. Seven percent. It was actually at zero for yeah. up until... I think it it came out Friday. And yeah. I think it was still sitting at zero. And then it, when it bumped up to like six or seven or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Which is, which is hilarious. Like, that's a, that's a considerable amount of time for yeah, a movie exactly. to be at a zero. Which, speaking of um, other bad movies, too, before we jump too, too far, Dark Tower oh. came out to pretty poor yeah. critical reception. It Wait, did it come out this weekend? Yeah. Yeah, August 4th, right? Oh. Friday. Ah, yeah. Dang. Let's get the... Oh, oh, no. Whoops. Nope, that's... <laughs> Stop. It's over already. <laughs> We're done. We're done. We're see out of here. The, the outro music <laughs> has started playing. <laughs> okay, see you guys next week, everybody. Thanks, broadcast. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what I get for having my soundboard on my phone. But yeah, I, All right. I heard, uh, er, yeah, I saw the reviews were bad, but I was still, I don't know, I was still interested in seeing it. Rotten Tomatoes has it at 18 right now. Yeah. Wait, 18? Yeah, it, yeah. I thought it was at like 40 no, or something. no. I watched. Wow. I don't know if you guys watch him, but Angry Joe, he did a movie review on it. And it's basically him and his buddy just sitting there like, this movie was boring. Like, really? completely boring. And they said the about the, the movie, like, you, I assume you guys seen the trailers and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. They said all the cool action scenes are in the trailer. Mm. Oh, come so on. So it's just nothing, basically. And this, yeah, this always sucks. Wins. Because, like, I. I see when I think Idris Elba and Matthew McConaughey, those are two of my favorite actors. Yeah. Well, Matthew McConaughey, I, I, I have right, opinions on, right, but uh, right. but Idris Elba for sure. Like uh, I don't know if you guys have seen Luther, yeah, but that's one of my favorite kind of crime drama TV shows, and he's great in it. And he's I'm fantastic. I'm sure he's probably great in this. But uh, I I saw an interesting review saying that, um, so uh, kind of a, an, a, a tangent, I guess. But the main character in the Dark Tower series, or the Gunslinger, is not a is not a um a black guy. It's a white guy. Yeah, and it's actually relevant in the story because one of the other main characters is a black woman who is very racist, and uh, her her like intro relationship to him is is uh is kind of racially pow- like fueled, I guess. Like she she doesn't like him uh, because of his the color of his skin, and so when they cast Idris Elba for for the role, like sure, like I I love him as a character, but. That casting choice already kind of informs, like, mm, I wonder if someone's making the right choices here. Yeah, and it turns out that uh, the screenplay maybe was not the best. Well, well I was did, I, sorry. Uh, did, did they did they change it then so that it's a white woman hating on a black I, man? I actually think they just cut the character. Okay, because I was going to say that that's not a really good mm. character to have. Then no, no, <laughs> not, not, a, not, not in, in these the, days for no, sure. For, what I thought was interesting when I was watching. I haven't seen the movie, but like I'm just going yeah. off what I heard in the review. But Joe and his friend were basically saying that Matthew McConaughey just kind of phoned it in. Oh, really? Which is surprising to me because I actually like McConaughey as an actor. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but True Detective. Right. I think it's an HBO series. Yep. Like, fantastic job. Amazing. Yeah, I've heard great things. And it just seemed odd to me that he would just phone it in and just, oh, whatever. Which is weird. That's one of those things where, like, trying to picture myself in the actor's shoes, I could totally see them getting on set, being excited for the first few days of shooting, reading through the screenplay and meeting with the director, and then realizing, oh, we made a big mistake. Yeah. But I'm contractually obliged to be here now. Right. So. Yeah. I also, I don't like when uh, well-written books or comics or anything get, like, specific story things, like what you were just saying, get changed. And that could change, like, certain elements of the story. Like, that kind of bothers me. It's like, the book su- succeeded or the comic succeeded in this way. You should make the movie or TV show like this. Yeah. Like, lots of people were actually getting, even though critically it didn't do that great Iron Fist, uh, people were kind of getting up in arms when they found out that it was a blonde-haired white dude playing uh, Danny Rand. And they're like, oh, like this was a great opportunity to cast, uh, like, uh, Asian American or or something like that in that role. I'm like, but then you're betraying the source material in the sense, like, uh, just kind of history of Danny Rand, the Iron Fist, like from Marvel, when he goes to Kunlun, 
and he learns the arts and he becomes the Iron Fist, lots of the people there kind of like hate on him and are jealous because this white dude just came <laughs> into our land and became this powerful thing. And like that was kind of a powerful story element of it. It's like you can't have that if it's like, oh, he's just he's one of them. Right. right. So yeah. I, I, I feel like there's a point where changing the source material just doesn't do it justice. Yeah, that's that's fair. It's definitely a double edged sword, though. Like, yeah, obviously, you're going to upset the book fans if you change the source material. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, sometimes changes are needed for a movie aspect. Because it doesn't mm-hmm. translate well to the movie. Like, the book doesn't work too well with the yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's definitely, I mean, we could talk about sorts of changes like this for hours. Yeah. And there's definitely, a, there's some balance that you need to hit there, for right. sure. Uh, but I feel like, yeah, in this in this case, they in the Dark Towers case, they probably didn't need to do the change that they yeah. made. And, uh, I mean, if you're if you're going to go down the road to start making fans angry and yeah. start yeah. With, with the lead actor, uh, you've got a problem right away. Yeah. Well, I, and and that's the thing though too. Like Marvel has already shown that they can do source material changes that don't ruin the original content. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like for for example, in the Thor movies, uh, Heimdall is played by Idris Elba, but in the comics, Heimdall is a white guy whose brother, uh, who's the brother of Lady Sif, the the female warrior uh, from Asgard. That that's a piece of information that doesn't really matter too much, and it doesn't like that kind of story element doesn't come into play a lot. Yeah, right. So you don't need them to be brother and sister. Like, sure, cast Idris Elba as Heimdall. It worked. Sif and Heimdall did not need to be brother and sister for the Thor movie to work. Changes like that, perfectly okay. But if if you wanted to make Thor uh, like an Australian norse god thing like that's not gonna work like if you mm-hmm. just had him well i guess chris hemsworth is australian yes. <laughs> i just realized i was trying to think of a i was trying to think of a nationality and that was the first I thought one you were coming at this from the other way Whoops. <laughs> no. but like if, if they just cast chris hemsworth they're like oh just talk normal like that like that's not gonna work he's supposed to be a viking god basically yeah so yeah, that's interesting speaking of um of marvel castings even though i know um or i don't i guess i don't know what who, what's deadpool is he sony uh, Fox. Fox. They had the casting of that side character that I sent you the image of, whose name I have completely forgotten, but I'm yeah. sure you remember. Domino. Domino. Hmm. What were your opinions on that? Domino looks like what Misty Knight does in the comics. And if you've seen Luke Cage, you've been introduced to the character of Misty Knight. She's that uh, uh, black detective who works with Luke and helps him out and everything. Oh, yeah, okay. And at the end of the series, she goes into her typical Misty Knight form where she's kind of in a like cool outfit and she's got the like the big poofed out afro. Mm-hmm. That's the Misty Knight look. And they release these images of Domino and Domino's this chick with the big poofy afro. I'm like, that's that's Misty Knight. That doesn't even look like Domino. Like the because uh, the actress is African American, is she not? I think she is, yeah. Like, sure, that's fine. I don't I don't care but i don't know something like the hair like that is kind of too over the top yeah, it's definitely iconic i wonder if maybe they're trying to do like a mash like a mixed character if it's yeah Misty that Knight could be and domino mm-hmm. and they're just they're just calling it domino for the sake of the movie yeah to simplify it that could be like she like she looked fine except for the hair that's what like kind of bothered me because mm. i don't know that like Do- domino also if i'm remembering correctly she also in the comics like went underwent weapon x program oh so she she's been kind of genetically changed to be a killing machine and i feel like an afro gets in the way of becoming a killing machine <laughs> i don't if know they, if like, there's one hairstyle you choose to be a killing machine afro might not be the first because well, uh because domino has uh hair that just goes down like to her jawline basically oh i thought the picture you showed me she had she had longer hair but maybe i'm just misremembering maybe misremembering yeah but it's typically not much longer than that. Okay. And I don't know. I feel like if you're kind of running through tight hallways or something, and you have to duck for something, you're yeah. going to yeah. get caught on something, and you can't. For sure. You can't get your target. I don't know. It just seemed a little ridiculous for me. Yeah. Well, maybe almost a little. Uh, this isn't the right term, but I'm going to use it anyways. Like kill Billy. Like they they wanted her to they wanted her to have like a strong presence, and I think yeah. the, the Afro hairstyle <laughs> definitely. Yeah, that's definitely a strong presence that. for yeah. sure. I almost feel like they're using it 
to set Deadpool up for a bunch of jokes. Oh, too. interesting. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like he's just going to be making or Ryan Reynolds is just going to ad lib so many <laughs> just mocking comments toward <laughs> towards her hair and what not. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Uh, but have you seen have you also seen Josh Brolin posting like pictures on his Instagram and everything like no. of him of him getting buff for cable? The guy is huge now. That's good. Cable he, needs to be huge. Cable needs. He's going to fill this role very well now. Cool. I, w- I was so set on Ron Perlman for Cable, <laughs> but jo- Josh Brolin put in the work, and I will applaud him for that effort. Nice. Yeah. You familiar with Cable, David? I'm not too familiar with Deadpool. Mm. Like, I haven't even like seen the first movie. Oh, wait, I, what? I, no, no, I haven't. I, Dude. <laughs> like like I said on the last podcast, I kind of got marveled out for a bit. Yeah. Um, and well, while he is a Marvel character, it, yeah. is, it is certainly not a Marvel movie. And oh, okay. It does not. It does not feel at all like a Marvel movie. It feels like a very, very good Ryan Reynolds improv skit. Oh, okay. That's also an action movie. And Interesting. It's, and it's pretty good. And he, and he wears tights. I've heard. I've heard great things about the movie. I just never. Yeah, and it's it's like knowing you on more of like I've known you for a few years now. Yeah. It's definitely your kind of humor. Yeah, I'm. I've kind of got a twisted sense of yeah, humor. You, you'd enjoy a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> like the baby hand stuff. The baby hand. Uh, I, also, I also just love T.J. Miller throwing insults at Wade when he, yeah. he sees his face. Yeah, the avocado <laughs> and the the topographical map of Utah. <laughs> there's, there's some good material yeah. in there. Yeah, I've heard about it. But, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, you should check it out for sure. I should. Uh, kind of moving things in a different direction here. As have you guys been like playing anything new recently? Um, not anything new. Well. Sort of yes and no. I've been playing a lot of uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, PUBG. I've heard that this game is really good. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really good. Bit of in a controversial spot at the moment, but it's phenomenal. Like, I didn't I I didn't think I would enjoy the um what sort I'm looking for like the King of the Hill style. Yeah, can you describe PUBG a little bit? Yeah, so PUBG is basically. It's you against everybody else in an arena. Um, so you can either queue up as solo, you can be duo and have a teammate, or you can have a squad or a squad of, of four or three. And what happens is there's about a hundred people in a match and you're dropped into a map that's eight kilometers wide and eight com- kilometers long, I think. Yeah, that sounds about right. It's it's a huge map. Wait, wait, like to scale? To to scale, yeah. yeah it's, it's massive. It's oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> so you're dropped in there with nothing. And what you have to do is you have to pick up, you have to like loot around and find stuff like guns, uh, bulletproof vests and helmets, mm. um, med kits and whatnot. And your whole mission is to be the last one standing. And that's, you know, with the huge map, like it, it would there'd be a lot of camping you would assume camping is where you sit in a spot and wait for some idiot to walk into a room and you shoot them yep. um but what they do is they've got the called the circle and what it does is it's done completely random and it shrinks the map down to like a like a really small circle near the end about oh. this yeah it's it's kind of like a, a two-layered system so yeah. there's the white circle and the blue circle right the white circle is invisible to you as the player, but you can see it on your map. Mm-hmm. And the blue circle is represented as a force field. Yeah. And if you're outside of the force field, um, you'll start to lose health. Yeah. And then depending oh. on how long the game has gone on, you will lose your health faster. So at the the first time, the circle shrinks. So the way it works is you have your white circle. It will shrink instantaneously. Mm-hmm. And then the blue circle will slowly shrink to meet it. And then yeah. once it's met it, the white circle will shrink again. So while it's slowly shrinking, if you're on the wrong side in the first phase, it's like, you can survive for probably a good five or ten minutes outside, no problem. Three or four shrinks in, you can survive for maybe five seconds outside of the yeah. of the blue circle. Oh. So it gets it gets very intense very quickly, especially yeah. as uh, once the circle gets closer and closer together, of course, everybody else is funneled closer and closer yeah. together. And it's run on different timers. I think the first circle is like about five minutes, and as it gets down, it's like a minute or 30 seconds. Oh. So it gets like <laughs> super intense, super quick. Yeah. And... It's it's so much fun. Like it's 
I, I never thought I would enjoy like a battle royale game, but it's mm-hmm. like the gunplay is like it. It's I think it was originally an Arma three mod. That's that probably sounds right. That's yeah, that sounds about right. And so like the guns, they're all like realistic. They've got bullet drop. They've got like, oh, okay. Like your scopes, you can like adjust so you can like have like so your zeroing distance is a hundred. Now you can adjust it to two hundred. To yeah. adjust for bullet drop. In shooting games, there's two types of, of shooting that occurs. There's hit mm-hmm. scan, which is if your gun is over the, a character at any distance and you hit the shoot button, you're going to hit them. Yeah. And then there's what this game does, which is more realistic physics, where, for example, if a guy's 100 meters out and running, you need to put your bullets in front of him. So by the time the bullets traverse that distance, they'll hit him. Yeah. Right? And so, yeah, it makes the shooting much more difficult. Kind of kind of like playing Battlefield. Yeah, like Battlefield, if you've yeah, ever yeah. played that before. Yeah. Where Call of Duty, for example, is a is a hit scan. Game. Yeah, or like Overwatch or. Mm-hmm. Well, Overwatch has a lot of slower projectiles. Yeah, I guess Counter Strike is hit scan too. Yeah, I yeah, would, that would make sense. Yeah, so yeah, it's a lot more realistic. It's super intense. Like, you, you go into a game not expecting to win. Hmm. Like the mm-hmm. first time you play it, you're like, okay, I'm gonna win because <laughs> you're so used to, like, I'm I'm so used to playing games where like like a Counter Strike or an Overwatch where you win a lot. Yeah. You you know you, you win about fifty percent of the time, but this is a lot less unless you're like super good yeah. or super lucky. Well, it's, it's the law of averages, right? And yeah. in a game of Overwatch or Counter Strike, your team is fifty percent of the players. Right. In this game, you are your team is one percent of the players. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So and if you're solo, yeah, if you're solo, but I mean, if you're for squad, you're about four percent. Yeah, I've which actually is not a lot. No. I've actually been curious because I've never looked this part up. So if you're in a squad. Mm-hmm. And there's no one left but your squad. Does it is it over? And do you win? Yeah, it's over. Okay, yeah. I was gonna say, or do you yeah. have to like no, kill no, off no, your no, squad? No. no, that would be kind of fun though. No, yeah. in squad, it's it, in squad, it's squad versus squad. So the way the game does is, if you're in solo, you only queue up with other solo people. Oh, I see. Okay, so you're not cool. like you're not like punished for queuing up for solo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and the, the player base is insane enough right now where it doesn't matter what you queue for, you're no. getting a game instantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it actually like broke a. It's it's the highest non Valve yeah. consecutive player count game. Yeah, it's like like five hundred thousand or something yeah. like that. The only yeah. games beating it were Dota two, uh, Counter Strike. Yeah, and I think that might be it. It I think it just passed Counter Strike. Oh really? I, I I'm not not I'm not sure on peak, but concurrent players it passed Counter Strike. Wow. Yeah. So it's super popular. Was was Overwatch ever that high? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to compare the stats because I don't think Blizzard outs them as, no. as easily as as a Valve does. But yeah, Blizzard okay. Overwatch was very popular. Yes, yeah, it is very popular. Steam's API is uh, like almost anyone can use it. Yeah. if they want, to. you can see any info you want out of Steam. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of Overwatch, so so you play Overwatch, David? I do. Uh, have you played Doomfist yet? I I played him in the public test realm. Yeah. Just kind of messing around with him. He's not really my style. Okay. Um, but he's he's certainly fun to play. Um, my friend is loves him. Yeah. Um, my friend plays a lot of Reinhardt, and he plays Reinhardt a bit differently. So, for those of you who don't know, Reinhardt's like this big tank guy. He's got a giant hammer, and he's got a shield, and basically his his goal is to provide like cover for everyone else. Yeah. My friend plays Reinhardt. He's got one of these abilities called a charge, where you can just like bum rush people, mm-hmm. and. <laughs> You know, push him off the map or yeah. smack him against the wall. He does a lot of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Doomfist is like right up his alley. Just the oh, okay, yeah, 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 the the charging up of the punch and flying around the map and stuff like that. Yeah, I uh, I'm not sure if you remember, but when we did a, like our top ten list, I, Overwatch is in in my top ten. Oh, okay, but I haven't played Overwatch in like the last month and a half. Yeah, I haven't even gotten to play Doomfist yet, and I'm like, ugh. I so. Did you play the anniversary event? Uh, I did. Yeah. So when I stopped playing when the anniversary event ended. Oh, okay. I had played it pretty religiously, like almost on a daily basis. Yeah. Since the Chinese New Year event. Yeah. So I played Chinese New Year, then I went to... I played a lot during Chinese yeah. New Year. And then I went to the... Um, what's the, Uprising. Yeah. And then the anniversary, and I stopped then. But now there's a new event coming out next week for the Summer Games 2. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So that's probably when I'm going to pick it up again. I've been playing a little bit of it, but yeah. not a whole lot. Who uh, Who's your go-to characters? I, I'm a support main. I play Zenyatta a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like Zenyatta. Zenyatta is so much fun. Uh, any other 
ones you play a lot or um zenyatta i play a lot of um orissa oh, okay yeah. Yeah, yeah um i usually swap between zenyatta anna and orissa cool oh man i i tried anna a few times i'm like oh she's actually like really fun. yeah she's cool <laughs> Yeah, I remember. I remember when she came out. I actually hated her. Yeah, like I played her like the first time that she was released, and I just I couldn't stand it. Like I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of like the way the snipers are done in that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I started playing her, playing her not too long ago, and I'm like, this is a lot more fun than I remember it to be. Yeah, I actually, um, I started, I, or I was playing her for a length of time. I, I was playing as her like a little bit more, and uh. I actually start getting pretty good with her sleep yeah. gun. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the most satisfying thing when you just like turn and put someone to sleep. I think I, I put like this. I wasn't even really shooting him. I just kept putting the same roadhog to sleep like three <laughs> times in a row. I'm like, he's so mad at me. I could yeah. like, he. D I just kept seeing the hook fly by my face. I'm like, nope, see ya. <laughs> Go to sleep. Yeah. Speaking of Doomfist, I saw, so I'm not a huge Overwatch player, um, but I do watch Reddit. <laughs> and uh, one of the top posts on Reddit the other day was a guy who uh, he made two boxing gloves into motion controllers. Yes. And uh, all of the actions that Doomfist would do, he did with the boxing gloves oh, to control him. So cool. It oh, was really neat. What? So like, he would like pump his left fist to shoot the shotgun shells and then like do like a big right hook to do the charge and had like the uppercut jump and stuff. It was super cool. That's sweet. Yeah. Is this the same guy who played Widowmaker with the baguette? <laughs> wait, 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 what? I don't think I've seen that, but I hope so. I, I think it might be the same guy, but I saw it on same on Reddit one time, and there was he had done the same thing, but he made a bag app motion control. He was like eating the bag app <laughs> while he was playing. It's hilarious. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like picturing someone holding a baguette and using that. To play. Oh, that was like that was awesome. So funny. Oh, that's so great. Beautiful. I've, yeah, I'm actually sad that I haven't been playing Overwatch lately because I like I put a lot of time in yeah. that game, but not uh, the people I normally would play with. Like they they just kind of stopped playing, and I don't know. I liked I liked having a team of people you knew. It made yeah. it it made it more interesting. Yeah. I always played a lot of, a lot of Junkrat. Nice. You're one of those people. I'm one of those people. No, Junkrat's just good for like any map, basically. Pretty much, yeah. He like, I uh, I don't know. I find some characters. It's like, oh, if you play them on yeah. that map, like you're just screwed. But yeah. he he's kind of well rounded in that way. Yeah. We call him Spam Rat. Yeah. I was also uh, when I was first playing, I when I first started, I only played Reinhardt. And I loved him. I thought he was so cool. But then I started playing a, a bit of Reaper. And I actually got, like, pretty decent with Reaper. There was a game. I, I finished. I'm like, felt like I did pretty good. I look. It was, like, 52 eliminations. Nice. Like, 35 of them were solo. And I'm like, yeah. They changed, good game. They changed him recently, too. I don't know if you I don't know if you saw it. Like a buff or Yeah, they buffed him quite a bit. Um, oh. So. I might have to play. So, you know, when you played Reaper... I mean, when you killed someone, you could pick up their soul and get health back, right? Yeah. Well, they changed that. So now when you go into, like, his wraith form and you fly around for a little bit, yeah. he actually, he, his guns will reload. Oh, so, that's sweet. So that's cool. But what they also did is every, every um, so when you shoot someone, you take 20% of their health. Yeah. Versus they don't pick up the orbs anymore. Oh. So it's like he's got, like, life steal going on. Oh, so when you do his alt where he just spins his shotguns around and blasts the crap out of people, you get a lot of health back. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to get killed while you're doing that. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I might was, have to jump back into this. Yeah, it was very unique, very interesting change that made him a lot more fun to play. And also as someone who plays Winston, a freaking nightmare. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That would be. Well, any, cool. Anything you've been playing lately? Yes, uh, I picked up a indie game called The Shrouded Isle, uh, which was on Steam for eight or nine bucks. Just came out. Uh, very cool game. It's kind of like a. It's kind of like Darkest Dungeon, except instead of having a like an RPG party to go um, fight monsters, you're controlling a city. Oh, interesting. And so, and the the color style is really cool. It's like only yellow and black. 
and then it's it's like very retro looking. It's uh, I would Google a picture of it. It's it's pretty yeah. cool. I've never even heard of this game. It, it like just came out. Oh, okay, yeah, maybe a couple days ago. And um, yeah, so the way it works is you have five meters. Oh boy, let's see if I can remember all five off the top of my head. Ignorance, fervor. Oh gosh, <laughs> ignorance, fervor. Um, diplomacy, I think. Something that starts with P that involves people um, staying in line. And. Ignorance? Yeah, ignorance. Fervor, discipline. For, yep. I can't read this. The, the colors are unreal. <laughs> the P word? Penitence. Penitence, thank you. And obedience. And obedience, yeah. So there's there's five levels of of resource that you have to manage in the community, and there are five governing houses for each of those each of those things. So there's an entire house that's responsible for keeping the town as ignorant as possible. <laughs> so, and then of course there's there's so there's a family responsible for keeping all of those things intact. Each of those families has a family tree, so it's the two parents, and then those parents all have four kids. And so, the way it works is each of these family members has two traits. And during a turn, you can investigate one family member for each of their in each house for a trait. The traits can be positive or negative, but they can also be positive and negative for other houses' traits. So you can be you can have somebody in the fervor household has like a high obedience, and you can have somebody in the ignorance household that has maybe negative ignorance, so that's bad. Or you can have somebody in the obedience household who has positive ignorance, right? And then you have to work through seasons. So in a season, for each house, you pick a representative, and then you go through the season. So as you're going through the season, you have to choose, okay, everyone has like a, a likability level of you as the master, and the likability levels will go up and down if you, or will go up if you choose a representative for a part of the season, and will go down if you don't. You can only choose three representatives a season, or through a, through a turn, I guess. And if you choose them, their traits will come into effect and affect your bars of each of those five resources. So if you choose somebody in the obedience household who has negative ignorance, a little text will go up like, he did his job of obedience but also read a book. And then the ignorance goes down a little bit. Or it'll be like somebody with negative or with positive ignorance will be like, you know, they did their job and then they also burnt a library down. And then the ignorance will go up. And the goal is to keep the town kind of even flow until um, the end of three years when the evil lord rises and destroys the town. That sounds so cool. It's really neat. The The color scheme for this game hurts my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's three color schemes you can choose from. There's a yellow, it's like, like a purple, I think. It's really weird. It's super that's, bright. That's super bright. <laughs> it's very indie. And you can tell. Like, oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's not made by a, by a large studio. And um, so I, I beat it my first time playing it. Uh, I don't know too much about what happens in the end, but it looks like there's different endings. So, it could be interesting. Like I got the fear ending. I don't know what that meant. Yeah. So, that's sounds... yeah. It's been cool. I've been I've put a couple hours into it now. I also saw one time when I logged onto my PS4, you were playing Just Cause Three, the August free game of the month. <laughs> yeah. And then I installed it after an hour because that game sucks. Does it? Yeah. What? I was not having a good time with it. Oh, it geez. controls like a wet bar of soap. Like I could not for the life of me do what I wanted to do in that game. Oh, interesting. Did yeah. you play number two? I did. Did you like number two? No. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> no, that's that's understandable. I did play I think I beat two though. Yeah. But uh I just couldn't like the I liked the idea in three in three you can detach your tether and then have it pull two things together. Oh, okay. And you can do it twice. So you could like I had a lot of fun driving a car between two buildings, hooking the tethers on either side of it to the buildings, and then suspending it in the air, kind of like a Spider Man thing. Like right. that, that was kind of cool. And then I'd go on the mission and fall off a cliff like three times because the controls are so wonky and the way like opening a parachute and then going into your your wingsuit and just like dying and hitting the ground over and over. Like yeah, this is this is fun. Yeah. <laughs> and like the the way that game handles the its upgrade system is so bad. So oh. you have to you have like a your set of items you have, right? And if you want to upgrade them, you need to get these gears. And the only way you can get gears is by doing um, skill tree specific challenges. So if you want to upgrade your vehicles, you have to do vehicle challenges. Hmm. If you want to upgrade your explosives, you have to do explosive challenges. And um, depending on how well you do in the challenge, you get one, two, three, four, or five gears. 
And for the life of me, I could not get five gears on this helicopter challenge. Yeah. And I think the reason is you're supposed to unlock a faster helicopter and come back later. And I'm like, I'm already not having fun doing this helicopter challenge for the first time. There is no way I'm coming back and doing it again. Yeah. That sounds and that's so when stupid. I realized, like, this game is no. not for me. That so. sounds way worse than 2. Yeah. And, and 2 was like, Just Cause 2 is like an, like an interesting, it's like a, like the story is like a bad action movie, like a yeah. really bad action so, so movie. So is this one. Yeah. I think that was kind of the point, though. Like, oh, the yeah. Happy, like, action movie. Like, you're, essen- you're essentially in a Michael Bay movie. Pretty much. <laughs> Just it's... explosion, explosion, guns, transformers. Yeah. 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 Just like a Michael Bay movie. <laughs> yeah. So. I, I, I installed it, but I haven't played it yet. Like, I, I got about an hour and a half into it going like, oh, this is almost fun. This is almost fun. This is almost fun. <laughs> And then it just stopped being almost fun. Yeah. So. And then uh, last game thing for me was, um, so when I was on holidays, of course, I brought my PS4 with me because that's what you do when you go on holidays. Yep, of course. And uh, it was a family holiday, so I spent time with um, some of my family, which included uh, one of my step-siblings, who's my little brother. He's 13. And I was showing him Bloodborne. Knocked him down a peg. Yeah, so he's... <laughs> He's in that stage of life. Like, he's into games. Uh, mm-hmm. He plays a lot of Overwatch. He plays a lot of Call of Duty, that sort of thing. In that, that kind of, you know, shooter-only yeah. stage yeah. that I'm sure we all remember. Oh, yeah. Um, and he thinks he's, he thinks he's like, number one hot stuff, right? Like, he <laughs> thinks he is king of the world when it hey. comes to video games. No, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, that's, that's awesome. Like, I'm really glad that you have such self-confidence. Let me show you Bloodborne. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna rock this game." And as and then he proceeded to dab, and I cried inside. Um, oh, yeah. oh no! Yeah, Yikes. I know. I'm so sorry for you. I know. But anyways, uh, yeah. So he, we got him into it. <laughs> Ten hours later, of like on and off throughout the week, he finally beat the cleric beast. And he's like, "Oh, I beat this game. I told you I was going to be so good at it." And I'm like, "Oh, young summer child. There's like <laughs> 15 other that's, bosses. That's the yeah. first boss." <laughs> yeah. And he's like, "Well, how many are there?" I'm like, "Yeah, there's some. There's somewhere in the high teens." Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, well, I'm going to go beat the next boss because I'm the best." And I'm like, "Okay." The cleric beast is simple compared to Father <laughs> Gascon. Father Father Gascoigne, yeah. Papa G. Papa G, I think, made him throw the controller by the end of the weekend. <laughs> really? He never beat it, yeah. Well, like, he was fu- he's fine when you're first... F- uh, like, I think when he gets under half health, he starts going insane. Yeah, so the, the Father Gascoigne fight... And I'm actually... Um, this is one of my favorite fights in video games, the Father Gascoigne fight. Oh. It's, um, I think it's a great example of a good gatekeeping boss fight, which the Soul series does fairly well, which yeah. is... This is the boss fight that you need to be able to beat in order to c- complete the rest of this game. Like if you if you somehow cheese your way out of the Gascoigne fight, you're just you won't have acquired you wouldn't have acquired the skills to complete the rest of that game. And so for that I think it's masterful. And uh yeah, the the, the Gascoigne fight has three phases. The first phase being when he when he just has a a axe and a gun and he's like going at relatively quick speed compared to the rest of the enemies you've seen so far. Yeah. Uh you get him to about 2 thirds health. And he switches to the two-handed version of his axe. Uh, well, but he can still shoot his gun because he's cheap like that. Much faster, much more aggressive. And then eventually he turns into a werewolf. Yep. At about one-third health. That's typically where you die. <laughs> That's about where, yeah. My brother got to that phase. Well, first first he would die just like right off the bat. Because if you don't know how to dodge properly in that game, Gascoin will just kill you. Like there's yeah. there's no ifs, ands, or buts. He just, he just destroys you. Uh, once you start getting a little bit better, uh, he got to the the werewolf fight maybe like five times, oh. and he's like, "Oh, I'm so close." Would see him change, and then just the the fight dynamics change so quickly that you, if you are only used to the first two phases of the fight and haven't been able to practice the werewolf phase enough, you're just done. Yeah. So yeah, he he didn't, but he was not able to beat it. And uh, I taught him a lot of tricks. We got really close. Um, part of that fight, and why it's also one of my favorite boss fights, is uh, his daughter is in the game oh yeah, yeah and if you discover her she gives you a music box that um she says if you show it to her dad he'll know who you are or he'll know that you're good and um if you play the music box while in the fight it causes guess going to remember like his family life or like his life before turning into a beast okay. and he'll stagger a little bit and if you use the box three times in the fight it actually um 
it expedites the transformation into a werewolf. So you can theoretically get the werewolf fight without having done any damage to him. Um, so I told I told my brother, you can use this box three times to stun him, right? Or two times to stun him. Do not use it a third time. And he's like, oh, I'm going to use it the third time because I want to beat him. <laughs> well, he found out how to get to the werewolf fight real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. But uh, yeah, great fight. Um, and yeah, help, help me knock my brother's, uh, my brother's ego down a couple notches over the weekend. Yeah. So that was nice too. Yeah. I actually, f- for some reason, like I don't, I don't think I struggled too much with the father fight like that. That was one I, I think on the maybe fourth or fifth time I got through it. And yeah. I, was, I was pretty proud of myself, but then it was kind of rough from there. Actually, no, Bloodborne, I, I was I was pretty decent at Bloodborne. Well, I was okay at Bloodborne. <laughs> How far did you get? Uh, Blood starved? No, uh, no, I've beaten the the one reborn where it's like oh, all. Oh, okay, the, yeah. So, so the next fight after that is uh, Mikolash. Because I think I think I was like two or three bosses from beating it. Yeah, the depending on how you beat that game, you were either two bosses away, three bosses away, or four bosses away from beating it, depending on what ending you wanted. Oh. Interesting. Yep. <laughs> so, well, let's hope I'm only two bosses away. Yeah, yeah. That's another like Bloodborne is just such a masterful game in terms of storytelling. But um, yeah, because you and the like aesthetic of it. Yes. Yeah. The uh, and the it, it does. It does. I, I've called it Eldritch horror on the podcast before, but a more a more poignant description is cosmic horror. Um, you don't really get to see the cosmic side of it unless you're really digging into the lore or you go to a side optional area. Um. But yeah, I could do a total lore cast on on Bloodborne. The lore of that game is crazy. Yeah, and but it's also kind of like day. it's also kind of Victorian at the same time too. Yeah, Victorian, cosmic, a little bit of Eldritch in there still. Yeah. It's good. It's a real it's a real cool game. Yeah. But yeah, that was all my gaming for the last little while, and I I uninstalled Magic Carp Jump. I'm so proud of you. <sighs> yeah, that's you did it. That's kind of sad though. And he did space for podcasts. <laughs> 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 I have a small iPhone. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But uh, one game that one of us has beaten here on the couch recently is Nier Automata. Yes. So we were kind of hoping that Jordan was going to be here too today because Jordan had also just beaten Nier Automata. But due to scheduling conflicts, we couldn't get that to work out. But uh, Dave and I have both beaten Nier. Yeah. So sorry, Ryan. You're going to have to bear with us. But feel free to join to jump in if you have any questions. I shall. But we're going to talk Nier. And we're going to talk all about Nier. So we're going to have some spoilery discussion. For sure. Uh, if you don't want to listen to that, you can skip ahead. Let's be safe and say twenty minutes. Okay, I think that'd be that'd be enough time. Yeah. So near. What I want to know what your impressions of near was after the A ending. So yeah. so quick recap: the way this game works is you beat the game once at the A ending, right? Yeah. And then it asks you in the post credits to play it again. Yes. And you think to yourself like, oh, this might be a new game plus. And I'm not really a fan of new game pluses, so I won't do it. Yeah. Not the case. You should play the game again because, yeah. well, yeah, let's get your impressions. What do you think? What did you think when the credits rolled the first when, time? When the credits rolled, I, I sat there and said, is that it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because the A ending isn't great. No, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> it's very cliffhangery, and and based on what you've seen action-wise, it's like, this game is fine. Like, yeah. it's not It's not something Bad. to write home about out and it's not bad it's just it was a good action game yeah and i think that's like a the the first time you play it it kind of like introduces you to the game's mechanics and all the cool stuff but in terms of like story it doesn't get going until i would i want to say probably midway through b is that is that a that that would be about right. Yeah, yeah, right about when 9S starts to learn the, yeah. the true, like, what's actually going on For with sure. the world. And so you're playing it, and you're like, oh, this game's combat is amazing. This music is amazing. But you're like, the story sucks. It's just so, like, it just, it doesn't really grab you until later in the game. And there's a little bit of a fault with the game there because one of my favorite story elements of this game is the upgrading of the weapons yeah. because every weapon has a story throughout the weapon yeah. and you get more of the story by upgrading the weapons, which yeah. is really cool. 
Uh, but you don't have really enough cash or item flow in the no. A playthrough to upgrade any of your weapons. And that's something that I totally felt they could have done yeah. um, to make it at least a little engaging. But some of the weapons do get spoilery yeah, when you, they do, when you upgrade sure. them. So I guess it kind of makes sense. But I don't know. There's a there was a few design choices in there that were yeah. like, oh, all right. I see kind of why you did this, but yeah. Yeah, I, I, w- I would I would tend to agree. There's a few like weird things. Like I thought, so like throughout the game, through every ending, like A, B, C, through D and E, you're playing different sections, but it's all the same world. Yeah, you're playing in the exact same environment. Uh, there's a there's an event ha- partway through the the A story that changes the yeah. center of the map. But uh, yeah, other than that, you're playing in the same environments. Um, and interesting that. Yeah, it's it's familiar, but at the same time, so in the A playthrough, you're playing as one character. Yeah. In the B playthrough, you're playing as another character. Yep. In the D playthrough, you're playing, or the C playthrough, you're playing as the first character again, and then in the last two, you're playing as the second character again, and the last playthrough, you're playing as a third new character. I think that's how it goes. Or uh, no, no, the last two you play as both of them switching off, right? I think is it C and D? C and D are yeah switching off. That's right, yeah. C yeah. and D are switching off. You play a bit as the you play main as, character. Yeah, so the, so let's use some names here. So yeah. 2B is the main character. Yes. Uh, she is who you play through in part A. 9S is the secondary character, who's kind of your side NPC yep. um, character in playthrough A. And you play through his side of the story, but the first part of the story in yeah. playthrough 2. So Wait, you play different characters in this game you do yes. so oh. so the the entire first playthrough you play as 2b who's the main she's the she's the female the eye patch person the eye, yes. they're, they're all eye patch people but yeah oh. except a2 except a2 so oh. so 2b is the is the female kind of lead of the of the story okay and she has a an npc controlled companion named 9s who is just by your side most of the game goes missing for for a couple um points in the game like he just gets captured or gets, you know, I think he gets killed or not killed, but he gets kind of he disappears hurt. for a bit. Yeah, yeah. And so mm-hmm. then you're only playing as two B for a while. You play through the game again in playthrough B, but you're nine S instead. You're the NPC. So then two uh, B becomes the NPC when you're playing, and you get to experience what's happening to two B as he's going missing. Yeah. So you get a little bit of fleshing out there. Also, two B's character. Or sorry, <laughs> I hate all their names because yeah. they're they're so interchangeable. Nine <laughs> S uh, has the ability to hack. Yeah. So hacking is something that happens to you very infrequently in the first playthrough. Um, some enemies can do it to you, and it puts you into a shooter style mini game yeah. where you're a little, this little ship and you have to go and destroy this ball. In the second playthrough, as Nine S, that's his main method of attack is hacking. Yeah. Or, I guess a primary method of attack. One of them, him. yeah. So you can hack bosses, you can hack normal enemies. So you're playing this mini game a whole lot more in the yep. in the B playthrough, and uh, I liked the mini game. I was actually fairly decent I, at it. So I thought it was really cool. Like, like you talk about like hacking in video games, and you have like bad ones, like a Bioshock hack, <laughs> yeah, or Fallout, or Fallout. And <laughs> but this like it's a little mini game in itself, and it makes it a lot more interesting. Yeah, and I was expecting to get bored of the formula, yeah. but the way they change up. You know, you'll get indestructible blocks or yeah. those turrets that spin, and that's it. Actually, makes it an engaging, an engaging yeah. thing. And and the cool thing about the different playthroughs is to be as much more combat heavy. Like she's really good at like doing a lot of damage and mm-hmm. like flying around and killing enemies that way. Where nine S is not, and you rely a lot more on your hacking and you know he kind of like pokes at enemies but doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Yeah, it's completely different. Mm-hmm. It's very cool in that way. And then um, throughout the game, you're meeting an enemy android uh, named 9S, who at least A2, is... A2, you mean? Or, sorry, A2. Yeah. Ooh, boy, A2, <laughs> who... Um, another female android, and she appears to be an enemy, but you then find out later in the playthroughs, and you start playing as her in the yeah. C&D playthroughs. Um, something kind of tangent, but uh, in the C&D playthroughs, 2B dies. Yes. Uh, she gets killed, and which is why control switches over to A2. Uh, and I love that scene where A2 is kind of standing over her, over her body, and it's totally not explained why she does it, but she cuts her hair with her yeah. sword to be exactly like 2B's hair. Yeah. I still, to this day, don't know why she does it, but it was it was a very cool scene to watch. Yeah, it was certainly a very cool scene. And the unique thing about like that is like that's when I got like attached to these characters. Yeah, because like in A A and B, I was like, man, I hate 2B. Man, I hate 9S. Because <laughs> um, 2B is kind of 
we'll call her a female dog. She's pretty mean. She's not yeah. very nice to 9S. And she does. She's very. She's there for the job. Yeah. Although, well, we'll get into story spoilers in a minute here. She, you think she's there for the yeah. job. She's she's very cold to 9S. Yeah, 9S is, has a very friendly personality, and he's definitely trying to, to befriend 2B throughout the playthrough. Uh, the reason you find out that she's cold is because uh, when these androids die, their memories get uploaded to the server, and then they get reinstalled into this new body. Uh, but the problem with the 9S model of androids is they're too curious. So they're looking for they're looking in too deep into what's going on, and there's yeah. a big conspiracy going on. So they keep deleting the the nine S memory. So he's always being reset as his like happy, joyous self. Whereas two B keeps getting reset as her with all those yeah. previous memories. And so when nine S gets too curious, the person who has to kill him is two B. Yeah. So she's killed two B over and over and it's it's implied that there was a relationship there where she did actually like to be yeah. like maybe 9S. or 9s almost romantically yeah uh, but you're it doesn't quite get there and uh and 9s can kind of sense it like yeah. every time he gets reborn with his new memories like you can tell he thinks there's something there but she just keeps shutting him down shutting yeah. him down and you find out it's because she doesn't want to get attached anymore because yeah. she's she's had to kill her friend so many times hmm. to to keep him out yeah. of the game and that's that's when 9S changed for me. Once I found that out, because initially he's like kind of like whiny, he's kind of annoying a yeah. little bit. Like I don't know if I don't know if you remember like Looney Tunes, like the one with like the big, there's like a put bull and there's like a little annoying dog that follows him. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. what I kind of like picture 9S as. Yeah. It's kind of a little annoying little dog that follows 2B around. And mm. but once you figure out that he's just like he's basically marked to kill over or marked for death over and over and over again. You just feel bad for him. Yeah. Like, to know that is, is horrible and to understand that, yeah, you're, we're just going to kill you over and over again. You're going to keep getting reborn. Sucks to be you. And the, the way you find it out, too, is fun because it's you as the player being curious yeah. as 9S. You get put into these into this hacking mini game, which is almost like a limbo for him. Yeah. And he has access to these servers he's not supposed to have access to. So you, as the player, are finding this information out as 9S. Yeah. And it's it's so powerful to play it through that way. Um, the way this game really caught me at first was when, in the in the very initial time you set the game, you turn the game on, um, you're 2B and you're sitting in bed, yeah. and uh, you're going through the settings, and 9S is talking you through it. When you start the, the second playthrough as 9S... You're still 9S in that sequence, and you're watching 2B go through the menu, setting everything up, but it's a recording of you doing it in the first playthrough, because I'm like, wow, this like this cutscene's really weird. Why is this guy flicking through the menus or switching yep. self-destruct on and off 20 times? Yep. I'm like, oh, that was me doing that. Whoa. And it was like this, okay. like, whoa, this game is doing something different. I, I felt the same way. I was like, why am I going through this again? I already <laughs> did this. And yep. Oh, I see what it's doing. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. The game does a lot of cool stuff like that. Specifically, the ending. Yeah. The ending E scene. So, this is huge spoilers. If you've played through endings A to D and for some reason haven't done E because of what it asks you to give up, yeah. go do that before you listen to this section because it's something very special. So, the ending E, basically what happens is the last boss fight of the game is... Uh, 9S versus A2, and who are two playable characters, and you choose one or the other. So if you choose one, you fight the other one. If you choose the other one, you fight the other one, right? And depending on who wins that fight, uh, there's an ending, ending C or D. If you complete that ending, regardless of who you choose, you get a choice at, after the credits roll. And what, is, what does the choice say? It's something like... It's something like, do you want to help others or not? Something like that. Well... So at first, the oh. first thing that happens is the credits roll. Right. And while the credits are rolling, you're hacking the credits. So you have the little hacking ship that's going back and forth shooting. Yeah. And the credits kind of explode and start yeah. to attack you. Yeah. And so at the first, at the beginning, it's pretty easy. Like you're you're saving yourself and yeah. you get about a third of the way through the credits. And you're like, oh, this isn't too bad. And then it becomes the bullet hell to end all bullet hells. Yep. I'm thinking this is impossible. There is no way I'm ever going to beat this. Like it's just, it's just insane. And after you try a couple times, the the game asks you if you want help. And you can go, yeah, I guess I want help. Yeah. Sure. And then what it's what it does is it shows you the names of other players who've gotten to this or who've beaten the credits, and their ships come and help you yeah. destroy the rest of the credits. 
Duh. And eventually you get through. But in order to accept this help, you have to give up the entirety of your game save. What? So yeah. in, in order to to accept the help and then have your ship go on to help other people finish the credits, you have to give up your entire game save. It deletes it 100%. Yeah. So, oh, okay. That's really that's really interesting. Yeah. And uh, then you go through the credits and you get the, the yeah. true ending. So, and, wh- wait. What if you didn't have any, like, friends who beat it? It's not. It's, it's not friends. It's, it's anybody. Online. Oh, it's just that. Okay. Yeah, it's an okay. online online mechanic. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so, and then that that then you get to reflect on the credits and you go, everybody's ship who just helped me do this was somebody who gave up their save yeah. for me, like so they could help me get through the end. And it's, it was such a powerful moment. That's yeah. actually really cool. Yeah. But okay, what if you were the first person to beat that game? <laughs> That's a good question. They they must have had like NPC they must have, NPC yeah. ships or something probably. But um. Yeah, it was just just cool and like such a that game's story has a lot of like what makes what makes humans human, what makes yeah. androids human, and what makes machines human. Yeah, and that line gets very blurry. And yeah, just that just that that final moment of sacrifice that you, the player, have to choose to make is yeah. is something very special. Yeah, I love games that explore the human condition. Yeah, you know what does it mean to be human, and it. It's nothing new, right? Like, we've seen it before in other games. Yeah. Soma is a classic example of that, if you guys played that. But it's just like, it's an interesting concept. Because really, there's no real good answer. What does it mean to be human? Yeah. And this game flips it on its head a little bit, too. Because the and so the androids know they're androids. Yeah. But they believe that they are the closest thing to humans yeah. that humans can be. And so when they discover the machines, they see the machines being as under themselves, right? Like, these can't have artificial intelligence. Humans made artificial intelligence. You then find out later, humans made artificial intelligence by using the parts of machines. So it ends up being that the two races are actually basically the same thing. Yeah, and going off of that, the other interesting thing that you find out is the androids believe that they're protecting the humans. So the humans are, there's like an apocalyptic event when the machines come in, I think they're supposed to be alien. Yeah, the correct? aliens. The aliens kind of delivered the machines, but there's no trace of aliens anymore. Yeah. So the machines come in. They basically wipe out all the humans, and the remaining humans fly to the moon, and they're having this last. That's their last like base, vestige last of humanity. Vestige kind of, of humanity. Thing. But what you find out later in the game is that the humans, they're all dead. Th- what the humans are is they're just stored on the server. Yep. And finding that out, it brings back that question of like the human, like the human condition, like the androids are questioning. Well, what's what's the point of this? Yeah, they you've been getting pre-recorded messages from humanity being like, because your 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 like unit you belong to is called Yorha, and they're like Yorha, like for the win, we're gonna take back the Earth, and and the humans will come back, like rah rah battle cry message, and then you find out that this message has been played for for you thousands of times, yeah. you just keep forgetting. Yeah, it's once you find that out, like that's so weird. Yeah. It was like it was like a shocking moment for me. It's like it was a, like, almost like a huge twist. Yeah, o- almost almost as good as w- the Would You Kindly twist in Bioshock. Yeah, it's it was it's for me. It was definitely one of my favorite twists yeah, of, of video games. Like realizing that was huge, and then there's th- going back to like the machines and androids constantly thinking they're better than themselves. I think my favorite moment in that entire game. Is there's this part near the end of the game, either C or D, where you're playing as A two, and you're in, you're in this tower and you're fighting the um, the conceptual, is it the conceptual representation of the machine network? Yeah. And when you're doing this fight, um, what you discover is like the the machines are constantly respawning. Also, just, before you get too yeah. far, the representation of the conceptual the conceptual nature of the AI are really creepy little girls in white dresses. Yeah, like <laughs> like The Shining. Yeah, like yeah. The Shining. Yeah, so that's scary. Um, but you're fighting them, and every t- every one you destroy, they're like two pop up, and you just keep you just can't beat them. But the pod that you have, which is basically like your little helper, it gives you like projectiles, or you can like shoot missiles or whatever, tells you that in order to to beat the boss. You just don't attack them, and eventually, like the machines will just 
or the conceptual representation will just collapse in on itself. Yeah, I think the the lore behind it is it replicates so much, and the networks become divergent, yeah. and then they start arguing with each other, yeah. and then they kill themselves through arguing. Yeah. <laughs> so so they they're arguing and they're having this like huge like oh I think I'm right, you know I'm think I'm right, and they start fighting each other and killing each other, and the character you're playing as a two says oh they're fighting just like humans, and that little sentence right there is like I'm, kind of like I'm like okay that's the entire game yep like the androids think they're better than the machines that they're right and the machines vice versa and it was just like a cool little ironic moment that i thought was like really interesting and really like a highlight for me yeah yeah that, that game is something special um and if you didn't get to experience it yourself i hope this little conversation we've had yeah here for sure has kind of shed some light on it but uh it's, it's cool. Yeah, I'm even more intrigued. Like, I was already interested in this game, but I'm even more intrigued now. Even if I've been, like, spoiled, like, I don't know. Yeah. I, and like, and I still cr- want to experience it. The crappy part is, like, now that you've heard that, it sounds really cool, right? But considerate people who talk to you about this game will only ever talk to you about playthrough A. Yeah. And playthrough A just isn't that interesting. And all, like, all I've said on the podcast going up to this point is just keep playing. Yeah. Because that's all you can say without giving anything away. Yeah. And uh, the way the game, oh, it's just so good. It's just so good. I was reading a review of, of Nier, and it said that exact same thing. It's like, ending A is poop. It's not very good, but just keep playing, and you will you will see why this game is rated as high as it is. Yeah. Well, I, I was actually like looking at some of the rating scores, and some, some things said like 7 out of 10, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. But then a bunch... Uh, I, I don't know. I feel like reviewers would put more time into their review... It was like nine out of ten. Yeah, you can tell a lot of the time the people who played through the credits the first time and the people who played through the credits the fifth time. Yeah, because it it will reflect in the review score, and in a in a way that that is the game's fault, right? Like yeah, if it's if it's driving people away in the first playthrough, that they don't get to experience the goodness that is the first playthrough. Yeah, or the sure. fifth playthrough, yeah. then that is the game's fault. But. Um, Man, just stick with it. Yeah, it's it's one of those games like it rewards you in the end. Yeah, like, you don't you. It's not like one of those like you play eight hours. Oh, like oh, I got the reward. Yeah, you have to keep playing it. Mm-hmm. It's a long game. It took me like thirty five hours or so, mm-hmm. and I I didn't do a whole lot of side quests. But it's well worth the the effort put in. There's also a, an insane secret boss fight hidden in the game uh, that I never got to play. I I don't know how to get to it, but I'm sure someone will. Will I think I know which one you're talking about? The uh, the Emil boss fight. Yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is which is pretty cool. That's in there. And then last thing I want to touch on in this game before our 20 minutes is up, um, you can buy all the achievements. I did. I what? don't know if you saw that. So if you no. finish the game right before you go into the E ending, you know the vendor that wears the Emil head in the in the Android Town. Yeah. You can just go up to her, and then she says like a little bit of a quip of like, "Oh, these are like these are weird, but like I have these for sale if you want them." And it's all of the achievements for the game. No way, so that's you just, so cool. You can just go in and buy them all. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. And you could like if you had it on PS4, you could just platinum it. Just I'm, a, I'm assuming so. Uh, David and I have only played on Steam, so that's the only version I know. But I would hope that she's there too. And yeah, you could just platinum it yeah. there. <laughs> and it's it's again, it's a little meta commentary yeah. on yeah for on sure that stuff. So. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, didn't know that. But anyways, that's our near discussion. Yeah. Thanks for tuning into that. Uh, I've wanted to do this talk for a long time, so thanks, David. No problem. And uh, Ryan, I hope it wasn't <laughs> too boring for you. No, 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 no. I like I was looking stuff up on my phone and everything while you guys were talking, but I was still like completely listening, and I, I don't know everything you guys were talking about. I was like pretty sold on. Like, no. it, it definitely did sound kind of confusing with like two B, two A, nine S, iPhone six S G. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like the, the naming convention of the characters is not great. But. Yeah, like that. That I was kind of got lost, and I don't know. One of them is an asshole or something. So I don't know. Yeah, they they're just model designations. So like the two B is the battle model. Yeah. But the nine S is the scout model. Yeah. And the A two is the attack model. So like I don't know. Well, I mean, you also find out. Are we still doing? Uh, okay. One more spoiler. If you've tuned back in, we're gonna do one more near spoiler. Tune back out for a minute. So you also find out that 2B is also 2E? Yeah. yeah. She's like some prototype it's unit. It's like a, like, basically, I think E stands for execution. Yeah. Yeah. To kill 9S. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's nasty. Interesting. But uh, anyways, so that's, that's that. That's yeah. near. That's near. Wow. It's a great game. Very good game. Uh, I just wanted to quickly touch on, while we were still on the topic of games, uh, I picked up, 
how long? I don't know. A few days ago, I picked up Prey. Oh yeah, and I've heard mixed things about yeah, Prey. Yeah, me too. So have I. And but I was still kind of like interested in playing it. Uh, I plugged it in, and boy, was I confused as to what was going. Like the game starts, and I, you're just like, "What is like? What is going on here?" Like they like you kind of go through these tests, and they're like. Like this isn't really any spoilers because this isn't the first like ten minutes of the game. You're you're doing these weird tests, and at first I thought it was just a getting like teaching you the controls kind of test that they do, because the the one was like walk over, uh, look around or something. They're like press that button, and it's like okay, it's like jump over this thing and press the button, and it's like okay, that's, and and then you get to this one room. It's like okay, you have to hide do your best hiding and there was there's just a chair sitting in the middle of the room it's like what so it's like okay and you go hide and you, obviously you just duck behind the chair and then they're like what's going on he doesn't remember it's not going right the test isn't working and, it, and it's like what is going on here and then things just get weird but it's like it's pretty cool because the game is um like it's a first person shooter but it's like definitely at the start you don't really have much for like uh damaging weapons so it's very and like ammo's not scarce but you don't have a ton of it Mm -hmm. and it's very much like you the game isn't relied reliant on you killing things it's more reliant on you figuring out your own way to get around certain scenarios, like whether okay. whether you just go into this room and shoot up these guys, or uh, or you set up like a distraction, or like you have this glue gun to like kind of freeze them in place, and then freeze them in place and like w- run around the edge before they see you, and then you're into the next room doing the next thing. Mm-hmm. And it's really cool for that. So I'm really interested to keep playing and see how that develops, because I- I've only put in like maybe like an hour if that yeah i've i've watched um kind of a a little quick playthrough of it and there's a there's a story spoiler in like the first 15 minutes that i thought was really cool even just watching it happen uh Mm. in the bedroom when you when oh yeah yeah yeah. that that messed me up (laughs) because that was just the weirdest thing like yeah i I don't want to spoil this because i want people to have the same feeling i did like even if you just have a chance to go over and play pray for 20 minutes at someone's house just so you can get to this part it's really just you like your brain's just like what just happened right there it's pretty cool yeah uh if you care nope. david i can i'll tell you after the podcast what it is but uh, okay yeah it's pretty cool yeah i've also i don't know why but in these last two weeks when i did have time to play games i've been uh i've been playing battlefield one a bunch again oh no way nice Man, that's a freaking good game. But th- this sum- uh, not summer, this fall, there are lots of good FPSs coming out that I really want. So I'm probably going to end up selling that game soon so yeah. I can get more yeah. games. Well, we're, we're probably going to be playing Destiny on PS4. Yeah, already, pre- drops. already pre-ordered Destiny 2. Well, I I went in to trade in some games so that I, uh, so that I had, uh, I don't know what it, cash back to play prey and uh i went in destiny one was one of the ones i brought in and they're like no we don't take this anymore i'm like oh he's like we have way too many copies like every store has way (laughs) too many copies who at this point is buying destiny one copies right yeah but yeah um uh so yeah destiny two that's one i'm gonna play uh call of duty world war two i love world war two man in the weirdest way possible that just um, there's so many cool stories and what happened there and it's so interesting in and in, in a fighting sense too like the the weapons yeah. like uh don't give me none of this like wall running and jumping no. around crap like just just give me give me a gun and send me to go kill some nazis yeah i mean <laughs> i i think it's nice that they're going back yeah to world war Two. but you can definitely tell that uh was it Activision that makes Call of Duty? You can definitely tell they're kind of riding off the success of Battlefield oh, yeah. One. Oh yeah, and there's some weird things going on with that game too. Like I think it, I think I heard they're not putting like swastikas in the game oh. b- because of the because con- in Germany there's um, I think it's a law 
but any sort of media like be it like a book or um like a movie with swastikas in it you can't sell it in germany yeah yeah yeah. somebody was just telling me this morning that some chinese um tourists got arrested in germany for doing the heil hitler uh, wow pose. they they are like i've heard lots of stories yeah. about modern day in germany with that kind of thing they are super because that like that's probably one of the worst events yeah. in history yeah yeah and there was a really bad dude and like how else can you move past that then like we don't do yeah. any of this here anymore. Yeah, it's like, because you could like you could go into a uh, a bookstore and find like I don't know like World War Two history books like, and there might be ones that have oh American flag like the Soviet Union flag yeah. and then and then there's like the like a swastika on it because yeah. that's just what it's about. But like you wouldn't see any of that in yeah. Germany. I know, like in the SFU bookstore, you can actually buy. I don't know if they can do it in. Um, our university, but the S- Simon Fraser University in Burnaby, you can buy Mein Kampf at the bookstore. Oh, that's weird. And that's for a history class, but they, you can't sell that in Germany at all. Yeah, no. No, not at all. Yeah. Hmm. That's actually really interesting. So what, they're just like taking all swastikas I think out? they're taking it out. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it's that game. Would, would they just replace it with the with the eagle then? I think I think they're going with the eagle, or they're going with the the axis symbol. Oh, okay. I don't know. That would make sense. Then. Yeah. They huh. should go with the Hydra symbol from <laughs> Marvel. <laughs> I'd be down for that. Yeah. That actually be pretty cool, but that that's a lot of talking and rights and yeah, things a lot going of copyright on. stuff going on. Yeah, and then uh, sorry, the other first person shooter that I'm super down for is Battlefront Two is coming out. Oh yeah. And there's gonna be a campaign, yo. Let's go. I'm yeah. I'm excited. Even based on the little campaign trailer that I saw, it looks it looks sick. Yeah, it, lo- it looks I, much better. Yeah. I I love my even Battlefield or sorry, Battlefront 1. I really enjoyed it cuz the the visuals and the sound design yeah. were on point. I felt like I was in Star Wars. I felt like I was piloting a tie fighter and taking stuff out. Yeah, it kind of sucked with like some of the game modes weren't amazing and it was multiplayer only, but it it was still a well done game. I just felt like when it came out, it was overcharged for what, it, or we were we were being overcharged for what it was, mm-hmm. especially with the season pass and everything yeah. involved. So I'm looking forward to what they bring to the table for number two. Cool. Uh, there's two quick things I want to touch on before we get to some of our regular segments on the show. Um, one of which, or they're both kind of in regards to leaks. Uh, has anyone watched the Avengers: Age of Ultron trailer? No. Or, uh, sorry, the Age of Ultron trailer. We've all seen that years ago. Uh, Infinity <laughs> War trailer. The inf- I didn't even know it was out. Yeah, it leaked from Comic-Con. Uh, they showed it to a, to a group of people, and there's like a cell phone oh, okay. leak out. So you haven't seen it? No. You haven't seen it? Nope. Um, yeah, so I watched it. Do you, Should we talk about it? I, I Like, I just have a couple of quick notes if you guys haven't seen it. Um. I wouldn't. I wouldn't pull it up on a phone and plug it in because the quality is terrible. The only note I wanted to say was, um, you know, looks like a Marvel trailer. There's characters in there. There's like cool, cool action scenes of characters working with other characters that, of course, you haven't seen yet. Um, the intro title card makes it look like it's going to be a Thor Ragnarok um, post credit scene. Oh, okay. The entire trailer will probably be. Oh, Ooh. interesting. The uh, kind of, kind of spoilers. The trailer, <laughs> the trailer starts with um, Thor falling on the windshield of the Guardians of the Galaxy ship. Oh, okay. So. Cool. That's how the trailer starts. Uh, the only weird thing I wanted to say was that um, you see Thanos standing out of his chair. and Wait, wait. He's not sitting down? He's not sitting. I know. Ah, crazy. Terrific. And uh, he doesn't I look like, like what I expected. He looks yeah. very, th- like, way thinner than I thought he would. But. Huh. Well, yeah. it, in different iterations, they, like, when he first came around... He was like normal height. He was as tall as Iron Man because oh, okay. his first appearance was in an Iron Man comic, hmm. and uh, like he was small. And then the guy who came up with him, they're like, "We gotta like th- this is a cool villain. Like we gotta do something cool with him." And so they like made him bigger, more menacing, but they made him like very like straight wide. But then in like recent iterations, they have made him like actually look like a 
more hu- not he already looked humanoid but they gave him a more actual human type body yeah he definitely has he is big though he has like the triangle frame like his, his yeah. shoulders and arms look huge but he looks like he skipped leg day for like the entirety of the universe or whatever like he just i don't know his <laughs> his proportions were kind of weird he is um, powerful though yeah yeah there's i don't know he, if he, i don't know if you want to watch it after, after maybe after the podcast but um, yeah i'll watch it after. It, it's cool it's cool um there's another big leak that happened that was a big hack of HBO. Oh, yeah. They lost 1.5 terabytes of data, um, some of that being some of their lesser-known shows and uh, some scripts and that sort yep. of thing. One of the scripts that leaked was the script for Episode 4 of Game of Thrones, which, as of our recording, is airing tonight. So I definitely won't talk about it. Um, it seemed to be pretty true. Like It seemed like it was a, a legit leak based off of uh, the, some of the things they talked about in it. And then a company that I believe is named Star India also had a hack. They are a distributing company in India for okay. HBO. And the legitimate episode leaked. Oh. Did it match up with the script? Sure did. Ooh. So that confirms that the HBO hack was legit. I mean, they had they had real episodes of TV shows, so it, yeah. it kind of made sense it was. Um and so the up the episode was up um, for a little while, and I watched it. Josh. I heard it's pretty nuts. So I really like as of as of the playing of this episode for you guys at home, you will have seen the Game of Thrones episode, um, if you're watching it Sunday night. So I don't feel too too bad saying stuff. I'm still not going to spoil it for you two in the room, so I'm not going to say anything. Thank okay. Um, I was going to say, don't say yeah. anything. The, the only thing I'm going to say, and this is a personal opinion of the episode, it is either my favorite or second favorite Game of Thrones episode. Okay. Ooh, probably ever. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so. You had a very, like, straight face <laughs> through all that, and I'm like, oh, is this episode actually not that good? And then I'm just like, yeah, that's my second favorite or favorite. Yeah. It's uh, like the Blackwater Bay episode is always going to be close for me. Yeah, for sure. Um, but this episode's amazing. Well, you, one of yours was, um, uh, oh shoot, what's that place called? When the when the dead rise wasn't that one of your favorite ones? The hold the door episode? No, no, no. Like when the uh, when John oh fails uh, at the yeah that episode was good yeah um what's that place called it starts with an like Her- oh not heron hall um bu- 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 but yeah that that hold in the north i forgot what it's yeah, called. I yeah i know what you're talking about but um yeah. no no this episode is insane like it's okay yeah it's cool. i'm excited cool. like three more hours from this point <laughs> where we're recording so that's right so and i'll get to see, i saw i got to watch it in 480p <laughs> so now i'll get nice. to watch it in uh in high def which in, will be nice in not pixelated form yeah there was also a um it's terrific a timed counter at the bottom like so there's like a pretty decently sized watermark over most of it uh, <laughs> so uh yeah i'll be happy to watch it without any of that but uh it did def- it definitely did not detract from what i saw yep okay so i got to watch that on wednesday i think wednesday or thursday okay nice yeah it was good it was excited good. so yeah um i know i think it was season five most of their like half of their season leaked do you remember that yeah i remember a lot hearing of it about was online that. Yeah. Um, I didn't watch any of it then, but uh, and I wasn't going to watch this one either. Um, but there's a subreddit called Free Folk, Free Folk, our Free Folk, um, which is like the Game of Thrones spoilers subreddit. Uh, it's like all the people who like. I don't know what your guys' opinions on spoilers are, but I don't care. Like if the information's out, I want it right now. I, I'm like that for some things, but the, some things I'd I'd rather just wait and see it. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Like e- even for Marvel movies too, a lot of the time. I'll see the first trailer. I won't, because I'm like big Marvel fan. I'll watch the first trailer. Won't watch any more trailers, because I I don't want, like a lot of those jokes like get played over and over, and you constantly see the trailer, and you get to the movie, and they're not, as, like they're still funny, but they're not as funny, and it's yeah. like yeah, the oh. uh, the Infinity War trailer, you can hardly hear any of the dialogue. So <laughs> yeah, There's well that. that that one I will watch the first trailer for just because I can't. Like Thanos is one of my favorite villains. Infinity Gauntlet is my favorite comic story arc of all time. So I cannot wait for this. Cool. So I just need to see Thanos like in something. Stand, so I so up. just so I know that he's there. Just yeah, so I yeah. know I know he's in the movie, but I just need to see him there. I need to see him doing stuff. Yeah, fair enough. Alrighty. 
Uh, so, kind of behind the scenes stuff for today's episode. We're a little disorganized. It's summer. We're busy. Um, we had a stag last we, night. That's yeah. why I'm half alive. <laughs> Ryan and I were at a stag last night, so um, he's he's certainly hurting more than I am. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, anyways, we we're gonna do some kind of quick fire talk us for thought here. So you're gonna have five seconds to give your answer, and then you gotta answer five seconds. And then for some of us, it'll be fifteen because we do a circle. But whatever. Okay. Wait, should we should we each pick a something or something, and uh, then we each get five seconds to decide? Something is something. Yeah, sure. Okay, my something is something ever is what is the best weapon ever Ooh. in a game? Oh, gosh. Uh, I want to say Cloud Sword from Final Fantasy VII, but let me think on that for a sec. David. Kay. BFG. Doom. Ooh. That's a good oh. one. Yep. <laughs> I don't know why, that's... but the first, the first one I thought of was Batman's Fist. <laughs> 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 best weapon ever. <laughs> that was, I read that question, and for some reason, I'm like, Batman's Fist. That's it. Done. <laughs> Oh, in games? Gosh. Oh, ugh. I'm going to say big swords in general, but the one the one I'll pick is Cloud Nine Sword. Yeah. Cloud nice. Nine Sword. Here, David, I'll Cloud pass sword. you this so you can pick one from the list. Okay. Mine is uh, what's the most unique video game you've ever played? Most unique? Yep. Oh, um, uh, I was going to say Call of Duty because my <laughs> I panicked. That's not unique at all. <laughs> I panicked and I thought of the most <laughs> ununique thing. Uh, most unique? Oh, no, I'd have to say Minecraft. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. It, def- it definitely sparked a genre. Yeah, because that when that first came out, that was the most unique thing you've ever seen. Yeah. And it was super fun. Mine is Lisa the Painful RPG or Deadly Premonition. Hotline <laughs> Miami. Oh, that's, that's a good one. That's a very good one. Hotline Miami's sick. Oh, nice. The original. The second one's not. That yeah, good. second one's not that great. Hotline Miami. First one is amazing. Okay, David. Okay. I, I panic at these. I think of the stupidest <laughs> things <laughs> right <laughs> off the bat. Call of Duty and Batman's fists. <laughs> Hey, man, Call of Duty was unique. Wait, wait, can I say a different weapon other than Batman's Fist then? Go. Go for it. I still agree to that. But uh, <laughs> uh, the Lancer from Gears of War is so cool. Okay, okay yeah. Yep. Best DLC ever. Oh, uh, that's... Um, uh, it's from Skyrim. Uh, it's uh, Dragonborn? I can't decide between Dragonborn and Dawnguard. Can I say both? No. Um, I'd have to say Dawnguard. Because I like... No. Dragonborn. Dragonborn. Okay. I don't buy a lot of DLC. Come Ugh. on, you can do this. I can I can go if you... You go, you go. Blood and Wine, Witcher 3. Oh, I knew you were going to say oh, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's your number one game of all time. It's an amazing game, all right? Um, oh, sorry. I will add one onto my list. So I got the season pass for Battlefront. Okay. When they came out with the with the DLC for Rogue One. Oh, yeah. I really liked that because I, I, I kept playing the just the Rogue One stuff. For weeks because it yep. was so fun because like rogue one was super intense like this kind of last ditch effort kind of thing and it really feels like that when you're playing the rogue one dlc i, I really liked it the dark souls one dlc uh, Hands yep. down. i just i didn't know why i can think of it but yeah that's that good call right nice. on cool good stuff speed round tacos speed <laughs> round I, that might actually came not from something or something but whatever good stuff okay so we're not going to talk challenges because only half of us are here uh, but the challenge was write a review. Write a review. I haven't done mine yet. <laughs> so good thing we're pushing it. <laughs> well, yeah. Part of the, like, I kind of figured not all of us would be here today. So I was kind of kind of going to leave it. Yeah. Good so. call. Um, and we have one email. We do. Which I will read. Our email is from Ben. Oh, hi, Ben. Long time listener, Ben. Hey, part-time dudes, long-time listener, first-time blah, 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 you know the rest. Two quick emails today. He actually wrote that, by the way. He did. He actually wrote blah, blah, blah. (laughs) First off, since we're going to play a little podcast telephone, hey, Phil, roaming around in our Liberator bombing dudes in Planetside was awesome. Hit me up sometime so we can give it another go. Maybe we can convince these guys to join us sometime and join our awesome Terran squad. And then he put the Terran squad quote, I think, which is, loyalty until death, strength and unity. Go Terran Republic. For my real question, we all have that one game that feels like it was tailor-made for us but never quite seemed to catch on. For me, it was Super Monday Night Combat, which, by the way, I did play Super Mi- some Super Monday Night Combat with Ben, and it was very cool. Uh, ben continues, it was my first MOBA. It blended third-person shooting with lane-pushing mechanics, neutral objects, and awesome personality-driven characters. The game moved fast, the announcers were hilarious, and I was in love. Unfortunately, it died a quick, unnoticed death in under a year, 
and despite other games like Smite or Overwatch taking elements from this game, nothing was nothing had quite hit that itch for me. Although it did lead me to my three year Dota obsession. So that's cool. What are your games that you feel were near perfect but ultimately failed? Either in the reviews department, player count, or just not getting the proper sequel to truly perfect the original's unrefined mechanics. Cheers, Ben. That's a tough one. That is. That is a tough one. Because I, I don't think I play a ton of games that didn't do well, like, sales-wise. Yeah, yeah. The, the indie scene is definitely something that, like, there's a lot of junk out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you're getting into something small and that's starting up, it's tough because it takes some investment. Like, so, for, for example, Super Monday Night Combat, the game that Ben mentions there, um, that was the very, that might've been the first game I did like a microtransaction for to buy a character. Oh, okay. And this, this character was like a grappler who had like a spanking paddle. <laughs> and so like his grapple ability was to grapple a character, put him on his lap and start spanking them for damage. Oh my goodness. It was something else. But, um, yeah, that game was very cool. And it definitely, I could see it today, today being like a, a top tier esport. It just didn't huh. get the following that it, it Weird. deserved <laughs> in both mine and Ben's opinion. Interesting. Yeah, when we stopped playing globally, it had like 50 players. Ooh. And it would take hours to do for a match. Yikes. So, yeah, that was bad. Uh, But in terms of not Super Monday Night Combat, a game that failed, that's kind of tough because you see a lot of multiplayer games kind of kind of enter that fail. Like, yeah, it's hard to it's hard for a game to fail in terms of not being able to play it anymore. That's not a multiplayer game. There are, of course, critically or just monetarily unsuccessful single player games. But you can still go out and buy them right now and yeah. play them to their yeah. extent. Um, if you maybe expanded this question to include games that were almost there but didn't quite reach that max that mass appeal, I would think that maybe Deadly Premonition would be my choice just because that was a game that got a lot of... Like, its brokenness is what makes that game good. Yeah. But in a way, I feel like there was something special there that maybe could have been unearthed with more work. Yeah. Not totally sure. Or maybe, maybe something like Lisa, like I mentioned for my most unique game. Yeah, it was special too, and not a lot of people played it. And I think it's worth more than what people are saying. But yeah, that's I, just me. I think going off your point with the games that just didn't get the numbers that you wanted them to, like that are still good games. I think that that's what we're looking at. Is, or am I? Mi- yeah, it's. I think I think Ben's lens was definitely more multiplayer focused. Multiplayer? But um, it it could have been a failure on on multiple fronts. So. Um, mine would be Spec Ops: The Line. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you guys have played that. No, no. I I did hear from people who did that it was actually quite good. It's, it's oh, I know mine. Okay, sorry, go on. It it's um it's like really good from a story perspective. Like um, I don't know if you guys have read The Heart of Darkness. No. But it's like, okay, uh, going to other things maybe <laughs> apocalypse now seen the movie yes yes it's like that the game okay so it's a lot of like the the reality of war and the the ptsd and the yeah yeah the struggle of you know i'm doing these horrible actions and just realizing to, like, it just to like trying to live with yourself kind of yeah and there's a lot of like messed up things that happen in the game i won't spoil it too much mm-hmm. but but in terms of like combat like the game's boring yeah like it's a typical third person shooter it's just not that exciting hmm. and it just didn't do well i think mean, the story is fantastic if you know pick it up for like 10 bucks or five bucks but yeah if you if you're in it for the combat don't it's not worth it yeah the the two i thought of before i thought of the actual one was and i don't i don't necessarily know what the player count was like for these games but on gamecube i got uh tmnt Oh yeah, which was based off that like 2005, like 3D animated movie. Right, and the game was actually like really really fun, but I just don't, it, and it wasn't online or at all or anything. But like, I don't know, the campaign was pretty good, but I I don't think the sales did great for it. Yeah, yeah, it was that that one was made by the Transformers devs, right? Uh, I don't know, because those games are also kind of underappreciated. Like they're just they're solid games, they're just not amazing. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, uh, War for Cybertron, when that came out, like, barely anyone bought it, but it was an amazing game. So when Fall of Cybertron came out, more people had that on their radar. Oh, yeah. And, lo- like, those games got amazing reviews. Yeah. But just n- didn't necessarily... Uh, okay, so Fall of Cybertron... Well, that one did 
a bit successful, so I wouldn't really count it for me. But the mm. the other one I thought of was the conduit for the Wii. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I loved the conduit, but no, like no one played it. I couldn't get in an online match. The campaign was fun. Like they had like these cool organic alien weapons. Yeah. Like you'd essentially like have like a ball of slime that you like put into this one gun, and it like fires energy rays from it. It was pretty sweet. But hmm. the 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 one that I thought of that fits this perfectly was Titanfall 2. Oh yeah, for sure. Cuz it was amazing, did critically great. Yeah. No one bought it. I think the problem with Titanfall 2 is like it was released at the same time that Battlefield 1 was. It was released between Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty yeah. Infinite Warfare. Yeah, that was definitely its primary problem. Its other secondary problem was Titanfall 1. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But plus the from what I've seen, this is like this is almost a completely different game from Titanfall One. Like, like there obviously obviously are the same mechanics and everything, right. but yeah, from my understanding, it's uh, like it, it's just ten steps above. It, yeah. It's just it's really a, an issue of appearance there and marketing. Right? Yeah, like you you really disservice your fans by not having a, a single player experience yeah. in Titanfall One. Same with Battlefield One. Like I can. I, only because it has the Star Wars name behind it, but I bet you Battlefront Battle Two, one, yeah. Battle, yeah, so bet sorry, Battlefield, Battlefront Two won't do as well necessarily as people think because of the bad taste in their yeah. mouth from Battlefield or yeah. Battlefront One. Um, the only Battle reason team. why, yeah, the only reason why I think it might do okay is because they're like they're advertising for it. Yeah, the advertising is very good. Is, is very good, but when Titanfall Two came out, it was kind of flew in under the radar yeah. and there wasn't much for it because commercials were being taken up like Battlefield 1, play it. Yeah. Be in World War 1 and whatever and it's like Infinite Warfare, Jon Snow is the antagonist. Like, yeah. yeah. Like it's Call of Duty, you can't fight their <laughs> marketing. Yeah. They <laughs> Yeah. Mountain Dew and Doritos are literally on their side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought of a Oh, sorry. Uh piggybacking off of that, like another game like similar to Titanfall 2 was Battleborn. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Overwatch. I never Screwed played. It. I yeah. never played Battleborn, but I, my initial impression of it was, oh, it's Overwatch, but not Overwatch. Yeah, it's Overwatch, but worse. Yeah, yeah, but it's completely different from Overwatch. Like it's like it's apparently like a MOBA, and I'm thinking, mm-hmm. okay, the marketing for that was terrible, and you also released it near ar- around the same time that Overwatch came out. Like it's yeah. a, it's the sum of multiple parts where games like Smite, yeah, like Smite. And Overwatch together ate ate that game's lunch. Yeah, and I've also heard it just it just didn't like it didn't have that tightness that yeah. both of those games have. And um, it's just sort of if if you're in competing markets and you're not the top tier product, guess what? Yeah. No one's gonna buy you. Did yeah. you did you hear that Battleborn's like free in, free until further notice? Basically, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could see that. Well, that was like evolved too. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're yeah. banking on the microtransactions now. <laughs> Probably, yeah. I still don't think anyone's playing Battleborn. To be perfectly honest, yeah. I w- I was gonna download it, but I'm like, what? When, <laughs> I'm, when, am, I, it? when am I gonna play this? Yeah, yeah. I'd rather play Overwatch. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, another interesting angle to Ben's question is um, games that don't get imported. Uh, oh yeah, which is which is another interesting thing. So uh, one uh, one game that I followed for forever, and it eventually got an English release, but I didn't end up buying it because it would need to be an European import was Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land for the DS. It was a so Tingle is a side character in the Legend of Zelda franchise. Oh yeah yeah. And this this Tingle game is about him and his like because he has like an inherent greed about him and it's like a ga- it's like a not a gambling game but like so for example you go to a shop and you have an item there's an item at the shop that you want to buy yeah. and you have like the you always see the ticker of how much money you have at the bottom and the the person at the shop's like how much do you think it's worth? Okay. And you got to go 50? And she's like, 50? Like, come on, buddy. And then you go, oh, wow. Okay, I undervalued it. Uh, 200? And she's like, oh, wow, 200. I can't believe you <laughs> pay that. And it just takes your money. And so, like, you don't quite know the inherent value of anything. Oh, okay. Or, like, you'll come across across characters in the in the land that will be like, oh, like, this dungeon coming up is really tough. You can hire me if you want. And then the money thing comes up, and you're like, oh, man. Like, I have eight grand on me. I think you're worth like two grand. Yeah. And then he takes your money and goes, no. No, I'm worth more than two grand. And you're like, well, I don't know how much more. And money's also your life. So you're like, oh. I oh. don't know how much I can give you. So, Interesting. Uh, it seemed like a really cool game uh, that 
I'll probably never get to play that because of really import cool. stuff. Yeah. Or even um, Monster Hunter is big in the news right now because of Monster Hunter World. Uh, but the most recent installment, Monster Hunter Double Cross, just got announced uh, fairly recently and is only coming out in Japan. Oh. And I'm I'm for Switch, for Nintendo Switch. And I'm really debating buying just the Japanese version because I love the gameplay of those games so much. But, like, that game's... That game's gonna go bonkers in Japan because Japanese, oh, yeah, sure. the Japanese market loves those games, um, and it's not gonna sell anything over here, right? Yeah. And they, but, someone at Capcom did the cost benefit analysis to say we don't sell enough in North America to uh, justify the cost to translate it, so we're not going to do it, and that makes me sad. Really? Yep. So, I, I don't. Know, I feel like that wouldn't be too much extra to get it to North. I don't know, like that. That that just seems like an excuse to not do it. Like, ah, oh, we sell sell a decent amount in Japan. We're too lazy to do the other thing, so you know, whatever. Yeah, it's because I mean we've talked about it on the podcast before. Monster Hunter is a, a special breed of game that yeah. you kind of need to you need to be interested in it to get into it. And um, they just don't think it has the legs out here, hmm. which is too bad because I I really do think with games like Dark Souls coming out and things like yeah. that, and it's it it's like not nearly as hard as Dark Souls is, but um. There's there's a there's a niche niche market that's not so niche anymore. Yeah, for sure. In in the West for games like that, so I'd really wish to see that more of them come out here. But hmm. that's just me. Dang, that's a little disappointing. It is. Well, especially to like Dark Souls has picked up out here. Like people love that oh, stuff. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's just sad. It is a sad day. <laughs> I cry tears. David, thank you again for joining us. No problem. Thank you guys. It's been a great episode. And we're going to catch you guys on the flip side next week. Hopefully we've got the crew back and we have some special guests lined up for the next few weeks. That should be interesting. So stay tuned for that. And we'll see you guys next time. Ciao. See ya.